The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Good day, learners, and welcome to your distance learning session in geography for Form 4. I am Changbi Pipetua, your teacher. We will begin our lesson with the correction of the assignment we had in the last lesson. And the assignment is state the area of socioeconomic development that has greatly reduced the development gap between the rich and the poor countries. Socioeconomic development which has reduced the gap between the rich countries and the poor countries. The area of socioeconomic development that has greatly reduced the development gap, greatly reduced, not reducing, greatly reduced development gap between the rich and poor countries. The first one is improvement in transport and communication. Where a road passes, development follows. So, improvement in the transport and communication sector will go a long way to bridge the gap between the developed countries and the developing countries. Our lesson 35 is titled Success Story of Solving underdevelopment success story of solving underdevelopment our lesson is going to unfold following this pattern learning objectives previous knowledge real life situation learning activities summary exercises and assignments The learning objectives. What are the aims or what is the, the aim of this lesson? At the end of this lesson, learners should identify and locate newly industrialized countries. Identify and locate newly industrialized countries. The next objective is to state or outline the reasons for the economic emergence. What did they do to become an emerging nation? The miracle for their emergence. Let us remind ourselves on what we had in the last lesson or what is going to enable us acquire the knowledge in the lesson that we have. So you already have a knowledge on what? Poverty and underdevelopment. You also have knowledge on what? The global solutions to poverty. Let us refresh our memories. List three causes of poverty. List three causes of poverty. The first one, low level of technology to exploit available resources. We have resources, but if we don't have the technology, if we don't have the technology, we will be unable to exploit our resources. The next, high rate of unemployment because of few job 
opportunities. If the opportunities are not there, we will become poor. We will not have jobs to do in order to earn an income. Conflicts that bring violence. Most countries are stuck in poverty today because of conflicts and wars. The little that they already have, they destroy in the name of fighting or in the name of conflicting over ideas with each other. And in that way, the country remains permanently poor. State two solutions to poverty and underdevelopment. Two solutions to poverty and underdevelopment. Improvement in the agricultural sector through mechanization. Mechanization of agriculture, the use of machines to cultivate, to rear animals. That's using machines in the agricultural sector. Look at what is happening here. This is a combined harvester. A combined harvester is a kind of a machine that harvests, remove the grains from its stock, we know, and stack in one operation. Here, you see shovels to tell you that it is a tractor that is tilling the soil. And using machines to till the soil, you can till hectares of land in just four hours. And with that, the agricultural sector or agriculture is extensified. Large areas are put under cultivation when you use machines. And with that, output increases. Income will also increase and poverty will be reduced. The next solution to poverty is to transform our primary resources. We add value to our primary resources by transforming them. If you look at what these people are doing, they are in a factory and they are struggling to transform raw materials into semi-finished or finished products. When that is done, the value of the product will be increased and income will be raised. Now, before we get into the lesson, let us describe this situation again. It's a similar situation we had in the last lesson. You are living in an area where there is abject poverty. The buildings are not nice, they are not accommodating. People around you don't go to school. They don't have money to pay fees. They don't have money to dress. They don't have clean water. There is a problem here. We will identify the problem and the measures as the lesson unfolds. So pay attention so that by the end of the lesson, answers to these questions will be gotten. Now, newly industrialized countries, who are they or what are they? Newly industrialized countries, new, which means that they are coming from somewhere and they are just new into what? Into industrialization. Put it in a simple way. Countries that have come out of poverty and they are beginning to do what? To develop or to grow in the industrial sector. Now, newly industrialized countries. Countries whose economic development is between developing and highly developed classification. We, we had had a lesson on the classification of countries in the world. We had developed or very rich countries. We also had newly industrialized or emerging nations and what? Developing countries. So newly industrialized countries are those countries that have come out of poverty. They are no longer classified as developing, but they are not yet developed to be considered as advanced industrialized countries. So they are just coming out of poverty. Which of these countries today are classified as newly industrialized countries? If we go to Europe, Turkey is a newly industrialized country. If we go to South America, 
We have Brazil and Mexico as newly industrialized country. If we come to Africa, South Africa is an emerging nation. And if we go to Southeast Asia, we have Thailand, China, Malaysia, India, Taiwan. Now, all these Southeast Asian countries which have come out of poverty are seen today as the tiger nations. They have grown economically. They have grown so much so that they are almost getting to the advanced industrialized countries. Now, these are the countries and their location. Remember, one of our objectives were to identify and locate where these countries are found. In the exams, they may give you a blank map of the world. Locate and locate a newly industrialized country in Africa. Locate a newly industrialized country in Southeast Asia. So, it is a must that you know the location of some of these newly industrialized countries. Look at Turkey. Turkey is in Europe. India, China, Malaysia, Thailand are in Southeast Asia. Look at South Africa. In the whole continent of South of Africa, South Africa is the only nation that has emerged and has been classified as a newly industrialized country. Then we have Mexico and Brazil. These are some of the locations. Now I want you to observe closely the location of these newly industrialized countries. When we get to the reasons why they have emerged, you will see that their location plays a vital role in their emergence. Reasons for their rapid economic growth. Why have they grown so rapidly? Can some developing countries copy them? The first reason is the size and the variety of their energy source. It means they have a variety of energy sources that they are using. You know, without energy, machines cannot be turned in factories. So they have exploited their energy sources to the fullest to improve on their manufacturing sector. Now, you look at petroleum expansion in China. This is just one of the newly industrialized countries. And these are the petroleum plants in some parts of China, which has fostered industrial growth. Favorable geographical position besides ocean to transport raw materials into these countries and finished products to other parts of the world. Look at Mexico. It is closer to the ocean. Brazil is closer to the ocean. South Africa is having a water body. Thailand, India, Turkey. Their geographical position plays a vital role in their economic growth. Raw materials can come from different parts of the world, from Africa to Brazil, from Africa to China, from Brazil to Mexico, from Turkey to other parts of the world. And that has fostered growth in the economic sector. They also have a cultural factor, a high degree of patriotism, love for motherland, so much so that the people turn to work relentlessly and for little or no pay for love of country. I want my country to be the best. I want my country to have good roads. I want my country to have industries. And they do, they make sacrifices regardless of the pay they have just for the sake of what? Love for country's sake. Financial resources. They have a variety of financial institutions which give out loans, short-term, long-term loans. At times, they even give loans for free to encourage industrialists, open up industries, to encourage the local people to open up factories. And in that way, they emerge 
they come out of poverty. They solve the problem of unemployment and poverty is reduced. The next, they have promoted agriculture. Look at rice cultivation. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, we showed mechanized agriculture. This rice farming is highly mechanized. They use machines to till, they use machines to plant, they use machines to spray fertilizer on the crops, and they use machines to harvest. And all of that is a faster way of doing farming. No stress. Much labor is not needed. Machines do the work, and the harvest is abundant. And when it is sold, it increases the income of the individuals and the income of the state. The rule of international trade blocks. What are trade blocks? Group of countries that have come together to agree to promote free trade. By doing what? Uplifting barriers. If I have 10 bags of rice, can I sell it to the neighboring country? If I have 10 uh, uh, tons of milk, can I export it to the next country? If I have to do so, they uplift barriers. When I come to sell in your country, we agree. You pay very little taxes or you don't even pay. Free movement of people. That is what was done in some parts of these newly industrialized countries. An example of a trade block is ASEAN. Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And then we have LAFTA, Latin American Free Trade Association. Those are trade blocks. But if we look at the image that we have, it is for ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. You see, we have China, India, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. These are all member states of the Asian trade blocks. Goods are produced here. They are sold here or are consumed here. It has enlarged the market. They have a wider market for their products or their industrial goods. And that fosters what? Economic growth. The rule of multinationals and globalization. Multinationals. Foreign industries that have sub-branches in different parts of the world. The governments have opened their borders and foreign investors are coming in with their companies or with the branches of their companies to locate in some of these emerging nations or some of these newly industrialized countries. So they bring their resources, they bring their technology, and with the knowledge, it spreads. And in that way, countries develop, countries come out of poverty, countries emerge. Then globalization. The world has become a global village. Goods are sold different in different parts of the world. Technology is spread all over the world. And when you allow it to get into your zone, there is expansion in the economic sector. The next is training of cheap, well-educated workforce. When we have skilled labor, the industrial sector will not be limping. The industrial sector will have workers who are skilled and will produce quality goods that are demanded by nations of the world. A strong political system. If, we, if they implement a strong political system where leaders have love for their country, where leaders are patriotic, where leaders implement rules that are meant for the growth of the community, the country will emerge. 
the country will come out of poverty and will be referred to as a newly industrialized country. Creating a favorable investment code, reduce taxes, create free trade zones. When that is done, the economy is booming, there's development. Promoting the development of locally owned industries through protections and laws. Encourage the local population to open up industries. Put laws that are favorable to them. For example, reducing taxes, creating free trade or free industrial zones. Free industrial zones, zones where Industrialists locate their industries and pay very little or no taxes. That was done in Malaysia, where a foreign industry was given a 10-year free tax period. And with that, the money that you would have used in paying taxes, you use to reinvest and you expand the industrial sector. Protect other, the, the, the local industries from foreign competition by putting a ban on the importation of goods that are produced by the local industries. In that way, the local industries will develop, will expand, and that will boost the economic sector. Summarily, newly industrialized countries are countries that have come out of poverty, countries that were once poor, but they are now rich. The reasons for the economic miracle, a strong agricultural background. Their energy sources are exploited to the fullest. The government has opened its doors to multinational companies. Banks have given long and short-term loans, and all of these have encouraged growth. Now, let us go back to the problem. What? was the problem, or what is the problem that was described in the situation at the beginning of the lesson? The problem again is what? Poverty. How do we come out of it? We invest, we add value to our product, we create trading partners, we send our children to school, we encourage technical education, we reduce taxes, we devalue Currency, so as to make exports drop, so that they, they, they can transform the raw materials. We prevent importation of goods that can compete with goods that are produced within. And all of that will go a long way to solve the problem of underdevelopment. And then we come out of poverty. Now, the relevance to the lesson. Learners should add value to their resources by transforming them into semi or finished products so as to improve on the living standard and come out of poverty. If you follow the lesson to the end, you would have noticed that a greater portion of the solutions were on what? Transformation, improving on the industrial sector. So a greater part of it is adding value, making our products to have quality and attracting consumption. In that way, we'll come out of poverty and we will solve the problem of underdevelopment. So we copy the example of the emerging countries. Cameroon, for example, should copy the example of these emerging nations so that by 2035, we would come out of poverty. Now let us answer some of these questions. Refresh our, main, our memories. Identify the newly industrialized countries labeled A, B, C, D, and E. So which country is labeled a is Mexico. Which country is labeled B? It's Brazil. C, Turkey. 
D is South Africa. And E is China. Let us confirm our answer. A is Mexico. B is Brazil. C is Turkey. D is South Africa. And E is China. Note their locations. Note where they are found. State four reasons for the economic miracle. State four reasons for the economic miracle. One, the size and variety of the energy resource base. They make use of the so many sources of energy that they have. HEP, coal, nuclear energy, biogas, you can name them. A favorable geographical position. Looking at their geographical position, they have a coastal location. And most industrial zones today have chosen coastal sites as their locational point for easy movement of finished products to different parts of the world and for the importation of raw materials. Cultural factor, love for country, love for nation, and with that, they develop the country. Availability of international financial agencies that are ready to give out loans at very low interest rates to industrialists. The rule of international trade blocks, grouping themselves, extending their markets, encouraging free movement of people, free movement of technology, specialization, all of that has gone a long way, or all of these have gone a long way to foster economic growth and to remove these countries that we named above from poverty. Assignment. State three economic measures implemented by the NICs to boost their manufacturing industries. State three economic measures implemented by the NICs to boost their manufacturing industries. There are a number of documents that you can use as reference. Get back to it and then do your assignment so that when we meet in the next lesson, we'll correct the assignment. See you in the next lesson in which we are going to treat economic activities. Tam tam a tonge, tam zabike, tam 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 a mote, tam zabike. Mane tam bia ninyane, njo bia yen.